Hello. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up your printer driver to produce accurate color and the highest quality photographic prints possible. You're using QImage Ultimate, which is one of the most advanced photographic printing software packages available. You may have already set up your page and you have the prints arranged the way that you want and you're ready to print. Before you print, it's important to note that setting up the driver properly as far as paper size, paper type, the quality in the driver, and other settings, as well as the printer profile that you may use, is just as important as arranging your prints and getting the job ready. So let's go into showing you how to set up the driver for a couple different printers. As you can see here, I have my Canon Pro 9000 set up as my printer. So before I go to print, I want to make sure that all the driver settings are correct. Now I happen to be using Canon semi-gloss paper, so the first thing I'm going to do is go down to this printer ICC profile, and it says off right now. So I'm going to do choose new profile, and the printer tab automatically comes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this Browse for ICC Profile button and that will bring up all the printer profiles that are installed on my system. For the Canon, Canon names their profiles a little bit differently than some of the other manufacturers. But I happen to know that when I installed my Pro 9000 driver, it installed these profiles when it installed the driver. For the Canon printer, I have two profiles that are candidates for the paper type that I'm using, the semi-gloss paper. Now the SG denotes semi-gloss and the 1 is the quality to set in the driver. I happen to have two of these here and you may have one or two of them. But the one that I'm going to choose, if I go over here and check the date, there's one from 2008 and one from 2009. Well, I want the most recent one, the 2009 version, because that's the one that installed with the latest driver when I updated the driver. The file name here is not really decipherable for Canon printers. They use some numbers that will appear random to you. So just look over here at the description and I'm selecting a Pro 9000 Semi-Gloss Quality 1 profile. So I'll click Open on that, I'll click OK on the dialog, and you'll see down here that now my printer ICC profile is set to the Semi-Gloss Quality 1 profile. That means that QImage Ultimate is going to manage the color and convert to this profile whenever you print. On the Printer Setup dialog, what I want to do is make sure that my Pro 9000 printer is selected. The paper size is selected. I'm using 8.5 by 11. But I'm going to click on the properties here. And the first thing I want to do is under print quality, click on custom and then click set. And make sure that this track bar here is set on quality 1 because that SG1 that we selected means quality one. So now we've uh, selected the quality and for Canon printers they usually have a color and intensity group here. You want to click manual on that and then click the set button. Don't change any of these just leave all these in the middle here on the color adjustment tab. What we want is the matching tab. I'll click on that and then select none for the color correction. What that means is uh, it's telling the driver to not do any additional color adjustments. Just take whatever the software that you're using to print with is giving it. So by selecting none here we're turning the color management in the driver off so that QImage Ultimate can do the color profiling through this profile that we've selected. Now on the paper type we can select the paper that we're using, which I happen to be using the semi-gloss. And those are the three primary things that you need to select if you're using a profile. You select the paper type, 
which is semi-gloss. You select the quality, which was the quality one that we set, and you click on manual and you turn color management off or color adjustment off in the driver. Now I click OK and OK on the dialog and now I'm ready to print. If we were using an Epson printer, I have an Epson R1900 that I'm using and I'll just change it to that printer for right now. Now that uh, printer says R1900 up here. So down here in the printer ICC profile I'm using ultra premium luster paper so I'm going to click on this again and change the profile to that Canon profile. Again click the browse button here to select my new profile and I happen to know that Epson names their profiles SP so I'm going to go down here here are the SP, it stands for Stylus Photo R1900. These are the profiles here that installed when I installed the Epson R1900 driver. These installed automatically. So if I go down here, I can see that there are several selections for ultra premium luster. Epson names their profiles a little bit more logically by the file name here, but you can still just look at the description. This is ultra premium luster paper, best photo quality, photo quality, and photo RPM quality. Well, RPM is the highest, photo is the, the lowest quality, which is still good, but the one that I like to use is best photo. So when I select this profile for the Epson R1900, I'm selecting a profile for ultra premium luster paper and best photo quality. So I'll click OK on that, and here on this, I would suggest leaving these at their defaults, which happen to be perceptual intent and black point compensation checked. I'm going to click OK, and it's asking me if I want to restore the settings that were active the last time I used that profile. I'm going to say no, because I want to show you how to do that in the driver. Now that I've selected the profile, you see the profile listed down here. Now I'm going to go into settings for the R1900 and we're basically doing the same thing. I'm just showing you how the different drivers work a little bit differently, have a little bit uh, different options. On this main screen, the paper type that I'm going to select is Ultra Premium Luster, which is this paper. So now I've selected the paper type. Now I'm going to go into advanced and on the quality here I'm going to select best photo because if you look down here it's telling me I've selected the best photo quality. You have to match the settings in the driver to the profile that you're using. So I've selected the quality and now over here under color management in the Epson driver you need to do the same thing that you did in the Canon driver which is turn off color management because QImage Ultimate is doing your color management. So you don't want to double up and have the driver also doing color management. I'm going to click on ICM and click this off button, the off checkbox. And that is similar to selecting none in the Canon driver. It's saying turn off the driver color adjustments because I know QImage Ultimate is going to do them for me. Now I click OK, OK, and I'm ready to print. Now as I said earlier, when you install your printer driver, if it's a recent model printer, your driver probably installed with profiles for most of the papers, if not all of them, that are listed in the driver. So when you go into the Epson driver and you choose an Epson paper, you probably have a profile for most of these papers because they're Epson papers. But what if you don't have a profile? What if you're using third-party paper you don't know which profile to choose? Well in that case it's more of a trial and error type thing to get the color the way you want it because if you don't have a profile there's no real guaranteed accuracy. So the best you can do is say let the printer or driver manage color. And that's telling QImage Ultimate, hands off, just let the driver deal with it. And then when you go into the driver, 
under properties, advanced, and ICM. You can either choose color controls here and then just let the driver do its thing or you can choose ICM and under the ICM mode I would recommend use host ICM. What that means is QImage Ultimate will send the image to the driver and then the driver will automatically select the profile for the paper that you're using. So that way works well with Epson papers but if you don't have Epson or Canon paper or whatever brand your printer is you might want to just select color controls or automatic for the color. Um, but the, again if you have third-party paper a lot of those papers will either come with a profile or you can go to their website and download a profile from the third-party manufacturer and if you've done that then you would just follow the instructions for using a profile okay before I close up the printer setup video I'd like to show you some potential pitfalls and potholes that might trip you up on your printer settings in your driver the first one that I'm going to cover is one that I hear about a lot and it affects mostly Epson wide format printers from the 3800 up to the 7800, 9800. So I'm going to pick the 3880 and I'll show you in that driver. It's very similar in all the other Epson wide format drivers. And the problem occurs on this page layout tab. If I'm working with a paper size, let's say I'm working with a little bit larger size here, 11 by 17. The temptation here is to go to this output paper and select the same size. It would be logical to do that, but let's watch what happens when I do that. Right now I have the paper selected 11 by 17. And take a look at this reduce and large checkbox. If I pull down the output paper and I go here and I select the same size as I did above, it automatically puts a checkbox in this reduce and large and it goes down to 98 percent and the reason it's doing that is because it's trying to fit an 11 by 17 print onto the printable area that's available on an 11 by 17 piece of paper now you don't really have to know what that means all you need to know is that if you select anything in this output paper drop down other than same as paper size you're not going to get the sizes that you ordered. You're going to get something different. So don't ever drop this down and select anything other than same as paper size or you're going to get a reduce and large effect. Now the other common pitfall that I want to show you deals with color. And I'm going to show you on a couple different printers. Let's go to the Epson R1900 here and let's just say uh, for the sake of argument that we have a profile selected. We've selected a profile for our paper and we want to print using that printer profile. I don't have that activated at this time but let's just say that we are. We're, we're using a profile. When you use a profile the printer profile is designed for a specific type of paper and specific settings like quality in the driver. If you add effects on top of that such as photo enhance or you go to the advanced tab and you drag some of the color sliders you're affecting the color accuracy and you're basically overriding the printer profile and your color may not be as accurate. Now let me show you in one other simple driver here. Uh, under effects if I already have my driver set up for a printer profile and I go start checking things like vivid photo or image optimizer things like that again you're not going to get color that's as accurate as possible because these enhancements should all be turned off when you're using a profile um, in an Epson driver it's called photo enhance in the Canon driver it's under effects on an HP driver it might be called HP digital photography and you might have things like automatic contrast just leave all of those unchecked because you don't want to go 
uh, trying to use effects over top of an ICC profile. So I hope these tips help you and will help you quickly get started into producing the highest quality, most accurate prints that you can get out of QImage Ultimate. Thanks for watching.